Hey, fifth grade, welcome to your third week of virtual learning. This is Ms. Gibson, and with me I have Elazar. He wants to say hi. So, this week clearly is going to be a little different than what you guys are used to. Before you had the packets and the hard copies in front of you, now everything is going to be online. So make sure you are on the correct packet for this week. It is titled March 30th through April 3rd. And then for today, you guys will be getting into the text for math. I'm sorry, for math, not reading. But again, this will go to reading. That is titled March 30th. So, of course, this is the reference sheet. Make sure you guys always go through this and refer back to this if you need to when you're doing conversions, need to know a formula, or need to know any of the liquid conversions. And then, of course, you are going to get into today's packet, which starts with March 30th. Okay, so you can now pause the video, but before you pause it, make sure that you have a pencil, paper, scratch paper, everything you need to, to work out these problems in front of you, okay? Because right now, again, you do not have a physical copy. Everything will be presented through all of these apps on um, Google Classroom, so you'll be getting the links here and there every single day. And then after that, you will have to come back in so you can watch how to do each problem after you have tried them. Go ahead, pause the video, give today's work a try. All right, come back to the video when you are done. All right, welcome back. So again, you should have done all of this work on scratch paper and then you're coming back to check your work. So the first page we're just doing solving with multiplication algorithm. Now, if you have a problem with multiplication algorithm, yes, you can definitely use the area model and then come back and check your answers. So if you did not get a chance to try out the multiplication alg algori algorithm correctly, go pause the video, try out the, the problems in an area model to make sure you are checking your work, and then come back to this video. If not, you can go ahead and continue. Okay, so each one goes through every single piece of how to do a multiplication alg algorithm. Clearly, these are three by three numbers, so there should be three rows of addition that you should be adding to get to your final answer. Pause the video and check your work. All right, good job. I know you guys are trying very hard and make sure you're showing all your work, so that's all you should be doing every single time. Again, on every page, it says you are expected to show work for every question each day. So. All it does is practice makes perfect, so you make sure that you are continuously practicing your task. Now, this page, I'm going to show you the, the responses after this, so you are doing, you're supposed to do one through four, okay? Most of these were on expanded form, and of course, choosing the operation for number two. I'm going to scroll to the next page that shows the answers, okay? So it has it in the same exact order as the first page showed. So number one, it wanted you to show which one was the expanded form for that number. I showed my work for every single option. That is the best way to do it in order for you to figure out how to get your answer. And of course, my answer choice would be D because after I show my work for every single answer choice, I know that my answer choice is D because that's correct and it matches what's in asking in a sentence. Number two, choose correct operation. So they're asking you how many rows there are in the flight. There were 96 total passenger seats. There were six seats in each row. You needed to figure out how many rows. So I knew this was division because I needed to figure out how many rows there were right here. My answer is 16 rows because once I did all the work, I did 96 divided by six. I showed my workout. I got 16 rows. All right, moving on to number three. It says nine times blank equals 90,000. Now, I know for a fact right here that there are four zeros, meaning that if this was nine times any power of 10 with an exponent, it'll be 10 to the fourth power, which is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which shows the nine shifting from the ones place to the 10,000th place four times, okay? So nine times 10,000 equals 90,000. Excuse the little errors right here. Second one, 
I needed to figure out what the correct answer choice was. Again, I am writing my workout for each piece of this addition problem. I am not trying to guess. I'm trying. I'm doing my workout every single time. So that's what you should. You guys should be doing as well. I got to my final answer, forty thousand four hundred twenty. All right, let's scroll down to the next page. Same thing for this page. Again, there wasn't enough space for me to do all of the work here. So I did it on another paper and then I added it into the text so you guys can see my work. Okay, so I might be doing a little bit up and down scrolling just to read two and four because they're word problems and I want you guys to understand why I did that. All right, let's scroll to this page. So the first one was one fifth divided by three. What I did first was divided a whole, which is the entire bar, into fifths. Now, the reason why I did that is because I need to represent one fifth. Okay? So I can't just write one fifth and then not do anything with it. I need a whole unit and take that one fifth and show that. Then it says divided by three. I needed to split my one fifth up into three. Okay, so I'm dividing this one fifth into thirds, but I can't just stop there. I have the entire bar, which represents the entire unit that I need to also split up into three at this point, each fifth into three, because I can't get my new denominator without splitting up the entire bar, which is the one whole into thirds for every one fifth. Okay, so which is why one fifth divided by three is now one fifteenth my number is getting smaller because I am dividing up this small piece of this one fifth of this one whole into three different pieces at this point, which is why I have one out of the entire 15 of this entire whole. Now, I'm gonna go up and read number two so you guys understand why I did that work. So it says, Ava was making an arts and crafts project that required strips of yellow construction paper. She had a piece of construction paper 18 inches long that she cut equally into a half inch strips. How many strips of construction paper did she have altogether? Now, of course, I already know that this will be a division problem, but I need to understand which piece of which which number goes first in my division problem. What is my dividend? What is my divisor? These are the questions that should always be circulating through your mind. Now, I have a total, right, of 18 inches of construction paper. That is my dividend right now. I am dividing the 18 into halves, okay? So I need to figure out how many strips of construction paper do I have left all together after I now split my 18 inches of construction paper into halves. So I know now that is 18 divided by half. So each box right here shows 18 inches. So this is one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch, all the way to 18 inches of construction paper. All right. I then have to split each inch into a half. So I'm getting a half from each of these construction papers, which leaves me when I count them up, when I count up each half to 36 strips of paper. So I have two, so I have one, like basically each piece of, each inch of construction paper, there are two strips of paper in those, okay? So now I have to split them up into halves. All right, let's move down to number three. Four divided by one fifth. So now I have four holes. So this is a hole, this represents a hole, this represents a hole, and this represents a hole. I need to divide each hole into fifths to figure out what my final answer would be to understand how many one fifths are in four holes. Okay, so that is a goal right here to figure out how many one fifths are in four holes. So I drew each hole out, which are four. I split each hole up into fifths, and then I counted how many fifths are in all of these collectively. I have 20. So there are 20 one-fifths in four holes. Again, you can see, go in a little closer and make sure you're focusing on what's going on. I counted each fifth and got to 20. So that's how I know that four divided by one-fifth equals 20. 
realize the kind of pattern that's going on here right now that we've had from one, two, and three. When I divide a fraction by a whole number, my number, well, my final answer gets smaller, right? But when I divide a whole number by a fraction, my final answer is bigger. So make sure you are taking note of these types of um, consistencies that are coming up right now. Okay, I'm gonna scroll up to read number four. There are nine containers filled with soil for Ms. Watson students to use for their science projects. Each student needs one fourth of a container of soil for their project. How many students can complete their projects using the nine containers of soil? So again, you need to choose the correct operation and show your correct work in order to get to this answer. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down to show my work again. I did nine containers divided by one fourth because I know I have nine total containers of soil and each student should be getting one fourth of soil. So I need to figure out how many students can get that one fourth of soil. So I'm going through the same process here. I'm doing my nine containers out. So I drew them all out. I split each container into fourths and then I counted how many fourths I have within the nine containers of soil, which leads me to 36 students getting one fourth of soil. Again, if you have any problems with cruising the operation in these types of division problems, or if you don't know how to visualize what's going on, definitely mark this, circle this, and get in contact with your teacher so that you guys can conference on this. All right. Last page is a need for speed. Again, I showed my work on the next page so that you guys can see what's going on. So I'm going to scroll down. And then we're going to just quietly like, go over it a little bit. So you can pause the video and check your work. And then come back and hear some of the descriptions as to how I got my answers. So go ahead and pause the video. All right, welcome back. So the way that I went through each of these, I first clearly, because we're adding or subtracting, we should always have one thing in common. What is that? Exactly, we should always have that common denominator. So I cannot add or subtract if I do not have the common denominator. So I had to make sure to convert all of these if it was either both of the fractions or one of the fractions to get to that common denominator in order to add or subtract. So again, go ahead. If you did not get these answers, circle them, star them, check in with your teachers and make sure that you are understanding everything that's going on. Because these types of responses may come up in the exit ticket that you guys are going to do for today. Okay? Now, the new thing for this week, I already touched upon that a little bit, is the exit tickets. So you guys should be completing the following question on Google Classroom and turn it in for your math grade. So every single day, you guys will be having something connected to what you were just working on in math. And those exit tickets will show us if you're understanding what's actually going on and what you're working on. Again, all of these are review. To have your notes out at all times, you should be watching these videos, you should be jotting down anything that you're having a problem with in order to show us that you are understanding and grasping all of this. So once you're done with this video, you are then going to go to your Google Classroom and fill out that math exit ticket for today. Make sure you have paper on the side. So we're giving you the questions ahead instead of you going straight to Google Classroom. You are then going to fill out and answer these questions on your scratch paper and then input the answers on Google Classroom. Again, this shows us that you are understanding everything that's going on. Each day you will have a different exit ticket. So please make sure that you are doing them in a timely fashion so that one, you can see your grade, two, your teachers know where you're at with the work and what's going on. And three, if there are any misconceptions with things, then us as teachers will understand and then we can conference with you on them to understand where the misconception is coming up at. All right. Happy Monday. I hope you guys have a great week. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.